Bigfoot Cooking. Hmm. Hey everybody and welcome back to Bigfoot Cooking where today we are making chicken pot pie. That's right, you got bad weather outside, we're going to have a good dinner in the kitchen. Now for this, everything just about is coming from scratch. That's right, we're not buying the dough, we're not doing anything that's, that's store-bought per se. Well, except for all the groceries that are store-bought, but we are going to make a crust from scratch, we're going to make the stuffing from scratch, and we're going to be scratching our bellies when they're full later on tonight. Now to begin this, we're going to talk about the crust. The crust itself is really very simple. We're going to be using two and a half cups of flour, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of sugar, two sticks of butter that you need to keep in the freezer because they got to be ice cold, and a third a cup of ice water. That's right, we're even using real ice imported from the fridge. Now for the main meal, or the stuffing of it, I guess you'd say, the chicken breast I've got in the crock pot. Now they, they take a little bit of time to soften up and you want these where they're just, they're fall apart. Otherwise you're cutting it, it's gonna give you a little different texture. Now you could put them in the crock pot for four hours on high or eight hours on low. But all we did, we took a whole pack, which was five small breasts, laid them in there, a little salt and pepper on top and then dropped a block of cream cheese on it. That way, well after that time, you're good to go. No added water, no nothing. Trust me, you're gonna see how this goes. From there, we've got three quarter stick of butter, a whole onion. Now, in this case, I would do like the, the normal veggies, carrots and everything, but I just didn't like what the store had today. So I bought a bag of frozen vegetables. They're already cut, they're picked at the peak of perfection. At least that's the sales technique they have. So they're, they're flash frozen, they're about as fresh as I can get. From there, three cloves of garlic, eight ounces of mushrooms, which is a whole box that you can get. If you want to really go fancy, you could get morels or something like that, but this is simple. This is pot pie. This is just good eating. We're not going to go too crazy. Um, I've got a third a cup of flour, two cups of broth, chicken broth or bone broth, whatever you whatever you prefer. Again, make, make this recipe your own. Don't just follow what I'm doing. Flavor it up some yourself. So our two cups of broth, a half a cup of heavy or whipping cream, whatever you want to call it. Two tablespoons of salt and a tablespoon of pepper. That's right, got that little flavor to it. That's all it's going to take. Now, crock pot's going to take a while, so let's go ahead and work on our crust and get it going. Time to get right with the ninja. That's right, it is party time. I like this little food processor. Now for this, I'm actually going to be using their dough blades, but they're plastic blades. They, they don't have a sharp edge on them and it, it helps where you're mixing all this together. It keeps it from warming up the dough because we want to keep it kind of cool as we go along. We're just going to take all our flour all at once, plop it in there, try not to get too dusty. We'll add our salt and in goes the sugar. Now with the sugar, if this was a pie crust as far as like making like an apple pie or cherry pie or something, you could go up to about a half a cup of sugar and that would make this a lot more of a sweet pie crust. But since this is chicken pot pie, we wanna lean more toward the savory. That's why there's less sugar. There's a little something to bring it out, but not a whole bunch. We'll lock our lid on here, set this guy down and power up. And we're just gonna do a quick pulse just to kind of mix all this together. All right, we got those guys in. Now let's cut up our butter. Time to make it into little bite-sized pieces. That is your chance to be ruthless. Well, see, this is where the Kerrygold, to me, makes the difference because it's softer than American butter. And, well, when you're mixing it in with this, it should blend in oh so nicely. Let me load it up and we will pulse this a little bit. Lock the lid and make the butter disappear. All right. Again, this is the nice thing about these blades is because they're not razor sharp. They do, they, they crumble this up nicely to where it kind of packs in, but it doesn't, doesn't heat it up. It's still actually very cold flour now, thanks to the butter. So let's get the lid back on here and we're gonna slowly drizzle in our third cup of water while spinning. Boy, that changed the texture of it quick. Look at there. 
we went from a, a powdery goodness to little balls that again are still nice and cold and pack in well. This is gonna work perfect. Now let me get my little pastry mat out. We'll dump it out and we'll form it into two little thingy bobs. That's right, the professional silicone mat. This thing is pretty daggum cool. I mean, they're worth picking up because they've got all your different measurements on here, different aspects. And of course, when you're measuring a pie crust, it's got the dimensions, be it 12 inches or be it 30.5 centimeters. You know, since it's 30.5 centimeters, I think they went off the American side and changed it down. Don't know. All right, so let's see how our pie crust looks. We'll take out our piece and dump it out, kind of all in one shot. All right, we've got our crumbly pieces here. Let's kind of push them together a little bit. And the good thing is for all these little stragglers here, you can just kind of roll it this way and roll it this way. You could even roll it over to mash it together if you wanted. Now we're not trying to knead it or even heat it up with the, the, the palm of your hands. We're just trying to kind of get this together. We're gonna Judy chop it right in half here. That way we've got two pieces because we're gonna have an upper and a lower. So basically I'm just dividing it in half. Now I don't know if you can see it there, but let me get it up here. See how there's little pieces of butter still poking out in this dough? That, that is where the, the duller blade comes in handy because all of these little pieces, well, they'll make this nice and flaky when we throw it down. It keeps it from turning it all into just one super homogenous mixture. The variety makes this oh so good. Now I'm gonna plastic wrap these, throw them in the fridge for about 45 minutes to an hour. And by then, chicken will be done and we'll be on our way to some pot pie. Woo all right, we have our chicken done. That's right. The magic of editing, four hours goes just like that. Now let's see what's hiding inside. Whoosh, nothing like a steam facial. That's why you always open hot things away from you. That way you don't get burned. Now, all the juices and everything that's in here is from the chicken itself. We didn't add any water to this. It literally was chicken, salt, pepper, and then a block of cream cheese, which we are gonna take regular mixer, a, re a really inexpensive one at that. We're gonna take our regular mixer, kind of plop it down in here and just, well, watch what it does to this chicken as far as shredding goes. It's not, not absolutely beautiful. Shredded chicken and all the hot and part of everything, didn't burn my hands, didn't nothing. Maybe, you know, get a free sample off the mixer, but other than that, we're good to go. Now let's get the rest of the ingredients back on the table. And behold, we have, well, this much chicken and maybe a little extra. Don't worry, we're gonna take good care of the extra somewhere else. But if you notice, there was all the juices and everything got sucked right back into this, and this makes this extremely moist chicken. It works great for all of this stuff. So now, We've got mushrooms, onion, and garlic. We gotta prep all that. Tell you what, let's do this in the uh, rapid, rapid cut mode with the background music. Tell me what you think of the tune. Let's make some filling now. We'll start out with fire, because you know, you gotta make things hot. And from here, we're gonna put us in our almost stick of butter. That's right, what is that, six tablespoons? I don't know, three quarters of a stick. That's what matters. And we'll just let this guy melt for a minute. Now that the time-lapse magician has disappeared the butter, let's add our onion in here. Just a little pour. Make sure everybody gets in the pool. We're having a good time today. All right, now that the onions have softened, I'm about to cool this whole thing down since all of these veggies are frozen. We're fixing to go from bubbly and boiling to not at all. Attack! Brrr. No, really, all y'all attack, get in there. All right, our veggies have defrosted and are getting a little bit on the softer side. Let's go ahead and take our 
three cloves of garlic here and run them through the world's best garlic press. I'm telling you, if y'all don't check out the link below and get this thing, I don't know. Y'all must be doing garlic the hard way. Cause literally just one little squeeze. Look at all, look at all that goodness right there. Into the pot and into a mix. Ooh, yes. Now that the garlic is mixed in, we're gonna add our flour. That's right, between the flour here and all the butter we put in before, it's, we're basically making a roux, but we're doing it with the vegetables. So that way, instead of doing it before and we'd have to fight it to get everything mixed in, by doing it now, well, it combines really nicely. Gets in here, does everything it's supposed to do. And this is what actually the thickening part of the, you know, chicken pot pie's got that bit of gravy in the middle of it. Well, this is how it gets its gravy, the power of the roux. All right, I've let my flour cook in just a little bit, maybe a minute, minute and a half or so. It's thickening up really nicely. Now we're gonna loosen it up. We're gonna apply our broth to it. Now in this case, I'm just using chicken broth, but you could use bone broth or you could even use a cooking wine. I mean, whatever works for you. But that's in there. Let's go ahead and add our cream to it. Oh yeah. Look at that sauce it's making right there. Now the good thing is we can add all of these mushrooms because at the end of the day, they don't take up much room. Don't hate, you know I got dad jokes. So look at how that sauce is thickening up right there. That, that is beautiful. We're gonna let this go for maybe two minutes or so and kind of cook on the mushrooms a little bit and then we'll add in the chicken. So just, well, I don't know. I'll tell you what, I'll edit out the boring parts. Watch how fast we have the chicken ready. Boom, voila. I told you, editing moves quick. We're gonna go ahead and plop all our chicken in here. Try to do this without making a big splash. And now we mix it all together. Man, this is smelling good. Well, and of course, we can't forget salt and pepper now. Gotta add flavor to it. If you use less salt or if you even have a restriction where you need like a seasoning salt, swap it out. No one's gonna judge you. You're the one that's gotta eat this, not me. Well, not unless you invite me over to dinner. But make it how you like it. Do your thing, enjoy. All right, we got everybody mixed in the pot. And like you see right here, we got it bubbling on the edges. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this guy down to low and I'm just gonna let it sit here and marinate for maybe 15 minutes or so just to let everything cook together. And that's the beauty of this cast iron pot too because since you do have the thicker walls, you're not gonna have hot spots, you're not gonna burn it. See, if you get a hot spot on there, you can actually burn the whipping cream that's in here or cause it to split. And I mean, let's face it, we're after something here. We're after something amazing and beautiful. And you don't want to mess it up just letting it sit here and relax. No, no. Low heat, cast iron pot, perfect. And if you like the pot, there's a link for it below too. Because I know I do. It's this one and that one. Favorite pots in the kitchen. So now that that's had about 10 minutes to simmer and get all happy, good, good, good. We're going to let that sit over there and rest. Got everything cut off. It's just going to cool down a little bit. So that way when we... Put it in our casserole dish for our pie. Yes, pie casserole. It's gonna taste the same, it's gonna taste good. It's time to take this, which has been in the fridge now, and let's roll it out. Step one, get ourselves a little flour. And I'll tell you what, getting a big salt shaker has been the best thing I've ever done for this because you can just sprinkle it on out. You ain't gotta like pinch and grab and hope I got enough. Oh no, you just shake, shake, shake. And then back to the silicone mat again. Everything's staying right here on the mat. And so it makes it a lot easier when you're trying to do stuff, keeps it all centralized and clean up so snap. I could not find this one on Amazon. This one was a gift and I really like it because of all the extra measurements, but I'll link to one from the same company that's that I found that one on Amazon. Give it a shot. I like them. So we got this, we got our French roller. That's right, fancy, fancy, because it's French and I'm not sure why. To me, it's just a roller, but okay. Let's try to roll this out into a square. And as you're doing this, move it around a lot because it can still stick to the silicone. And while you can flex it and pop it off, you don't want it to tear the dough. So let's get to some square unrolling. 
check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. All right, so we've rolled it out roughly square. Let's see how she fits when we put her in a pan. We'll just make sure we flour up our rolling pin really good here because we don't want it to stick to it on the, the dismount now, do we? And we'll just gently pick this up and roll it into it, keeping this extremely loose. We don't want it to stick. We'll bring our pan here. And let's see how well we unroll into it. Not too, too bad. Let's uh, tuck our edges down in here. Now I'm gonna take some of the big pieces off of here and tuck them on this side so that way I can have a crust all the way around. So let me tweak this a little bit, but we're gonna make this thing fit just right. Now that we've got our nice little pie crust set up in here, it's time to scoop the goodness right on in. Just fill this bad boy up with the flavor, baby. Mm. All right, we got this thing stuffed up nicely. I do have a little bit left over, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna freeze that and save it so that later on, when I get ready to make a pie, you know, for just because I'm hungry, well, I got that left over. So now, let's go ahead and roll out our top crust and get that baby laid on nicely. Look at that. I'm gonna take the ends here, and I'm gonna kinda roll them under. Typically, you would actually tuck them into the bottom one, but the because I changed from a round to a square pan, well, I didn't quite have enough sticking up to do that nice pretty tuck. Is it gonna change the way it tastes? Nope, but just sometimes it helps with presentation, you know? Oh, looking good, looking good. Now let's go ahead and give it some breathing room because as this cooks, we're gonna steam up a little bit and we don't wanna, well, we don't want it popping up and just not looking right. So this will give us room for everything to, to sweat out as it cooks. So now we got our oven set to 425. Let's go ahead and slide this thing in there and leave it alone for about 35 minutes to absorb some of the heat from the oven and get this crust looking just right. Now, while that's baking and cleaning up, I wanted to point out uh, two things while I'm at it. One, don't forget, we are doing a sticker giveaway. Until I get to 750 subscribers, drop me an email right here saying, hey, send me a sticker and eight of you guys will win on a random. Now, for the other two stickers, well, send me something kind of cool, interesting, maybe have a little shock value, I don't know. Surprise me with something. If I really like it, you'll win a sticker. And then whoever does the 750th subscribe, well, you'll win one automatically. Just send me the screenshot showing, hey, I'm 750, boom, it's coming your way. Now, while I'm getting all this stuff cleaned up, Benson tells me he wants to discuss the history of the chicken pot pie. Okay, take it away, Benson. Today, we're going to talk about the pot pie. See, in 500 BC, the Greeks actually invented a pot pie. It was called the Autocreus, and it was pretty good, but it wasn't until 1796 that it was called a chicken pie. I guess no one thought about putting chicken in it. But then, around 1877, well, they stuck the name Chicken Pot Pie in it. What an idea. Now this, of course, started in England. Where else? Now they used to call them simply meat pies. But now, in Australia, it's called an Aussie pie. Seems a bit biased to me. And they eat more of those than any other place in the whole world. They make it where it's the favorite place to have a meat pie is Australia. Who knew? <laughs> Take care, guys. And there you have it. Piping hot right out of the oven. Now I'm gonna let this cool down, but I do wanna point out one little mistake I made. There was supposed to be an egg wash that went on top of this. Totally forgot about it. However, what that does is it gives it more of that glossy, shiny finish. And as you can see, this is more of a, a matte finish doesn't really change the taste much or, you know, any big differences, but just, you know, as you can see, it's a little bit of an appearance difference. So if you kind of wondered what it looks like without the egg wash, 
There you go. Now I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit because if I try to scoop it out right now, it's gonna be so runny, it's, you're not gonna get a good presentation. So I'm gonna give it about 15 minutes to just calm itself from that there hot oven it has been bathing in for a bit. And then you know what's up, we gonna eat. All right, we've let this thing cool down enough to where I can actually touch it without burning myself. I know that's kind of tough for this channel because I'm always ready to eat in case you couldn't tell. Let's see how we slice in here. We're just going to take ourselves a little bit of the spatula work here. Go all the way to the bottom. We'll try a piece right here. Now, because I'm trying to do this for a camera, I almost guarantee I won't get this out in one piece, but let's see how lucky we can get. Oh, look at that. We pulled it out and we got some steam coming off of it. Oh, this is going to be a good bite. It's already starting off right. Hmm. Now, let's see. I mean, take a look in there. I mean, peek it up to the camera. What do you think about that right there? It looked pretty scrum delicious. I'll tell you what. Let's see. You got all the nice flakes in the crust. Let's see how the flakes. Oh, we even got the bottom crust holding together good. That's what I'm talking about. Let's do some disappearing tricks, shall we? Well, that's pretty good. I mean, it's your basic, simple chicken pot pie. It's kind of hard to go wrong, and there's a lot that went right on this one, that's for sure. So me, I'm gonna eat this thing. I'm glad you learned a little bit from Benson about how to, the differences between pies and all that good stuff. And well, y'all just remember, I'm hungry, and Bigfoot is real. Y'all take care. I'm gonna sit me a little something at the dinner table right here. I didn't hear, yeah, start over, doesn't work that way.